Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. What, you're not working on a new robot or trying to beat Tesla full self-driving today? No, I'm just getting smarter on Brilliant. I see. You're taking a course on Brilliant, our sponsors for today's show. Yeah, I mean, we joke around, but if you stop and think about it, Brilliant really is incredible. Yeah, I loved science and math as a kid, but I didn't love how they were taught in school. Exactly. I mean, depending on where you go to school and who your teachers are, you may not be getting taught these fundamentally important subjects in a way that works for you. Yeah, Brilliant teaches over 60 different courses brilliantly. Over 10 million people have learned from Brilliant. Courses on everything from logic and pre-algebra to neural networks and cryptocurrency. And with Brilliant's interactive problems and hints, you're actually learning at your pace in a way that sticks in your brain. Yeah, I love brilliant storytelling. It just works for me. Maybe you've got someone in your family who's been struggling in a topic this past year. Brilliant is a great way to reinforce and catch up on subjects that might have been hard. Way better than just handing someone a textbook or a workbook. I mean, that is so 20th century. To support our channel and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash now you know and sign up for free. And also the first 200 people to go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Okay, so last week we interviewed Sandy Monroe, who basically told us that China is on its way. When I, when I said that the crossover point was going to be 2028 for ICE to EV, I wasn't kidding. A lot of those cars are going to be Chinese. There's about to be a tidal wave of Chinese cars entering the U.S. market that'll make us forget the Japanese car wave in the 1980s, and it's gonna hurt American big auto. In this episode, we want to dive into, one, which Chinese car brands are coming, and number two, will Tesla get washed away, or will it ride that wave all the way to the bank? All right, so let's start with candy. Yes, please. No, the car company. Oh, okay. K-A-N-D-I. I think when most U.S. consumers think about Chinese cars, they think of models like these. These are from the Chinese auto company, Candy. And we've talked about many of these models like the K27 and the K22 on Tesla Time News because they're so cheap. I mean, we're talking $20,499 for the five-door, four-passenger subcompact K27. Wait, I thought it was eight grand. That's what all the headlines say. Well, that's after the California and the federal tax incentives, which is still amazing. Uh, and the EPA has certified it for California roads, although I'm not sure if K27 has passed all of DOT's safety testing yet. Are there any models that have? Well, yeah. Candy bought a U.S. vehicle distributor called Sportsman Country in Dallas in 2018, and they went public on NASDAQ under the ticker symbol KNDI. The K22 and the EX3 models are approved by NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and the DOT for U.S. roads, which, according to Candy, means they qualify for U.S. tax incentives. So we got the two-seater K22. It has a 49 kilowatt or 66 horsepower motor. It has 75 miles of range, a top speed of 64 miles an hour, and a list price of $18,995. So this is basically a smart car. Yeah. I mean, it's with not, a smiley face on it. I mean, I do like the smiley face. I think that's cute. But is this really going to attract a lot of attention for people who are looking to buy a car? Yeah, I don't know. They have another one, uh, the EX3, which is their sport utility model. It has the same motor, uh, a range of 188 miles, a top speed of 75 miles an hour, and sells for $29,995. Both models only offer level two charging. So I think many U.S. consumers would expect this kind of design and feature set from a Chinese car company. And I think if this is all that China had to offer, then there wouldn't be much for U.S. auto companies to worry about. But China has so much more to offer. Let's talk about the Wuling Hongguang Mini EV. It has a 9.2 kilowatt hour battery with 75 mile NEDC range. Or you can get it with a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery for 110 miles of range. Again, that's NEDC. Can you now, explain that again? NEDC was the original European standard for measuring ranges of electric vehicles. And it's really incorrect. It's super rosy. Okay, um, so how rosy is it? Well, if you take the NEDC range and you divide it by 1.43, you will get the real range. There's a great uh, article by Inside EVs that goes through the whole math that they did. But you're going to get roughly the real world range. So it's 43% rosier than it should be. Yes. Okay. So... Ranges like 110 miles NEDC, not as good as you think they are. Gotcha. Okay. But getting back to the Mini EV, it seats four. It has a 13 kilowatt motor or 17.4 horsepower motor. That's it. Top speed of 62 miles an hour. Okay, so I think right now you're probably laughing, but the big story here is two things. Number one, price. It starts at just $4,200. It tops out with all the doodads and whistles at $5,600. 
And number two is sales. It has become very popular in China, outselling the Tesla Model 3. In fact, in January of 2021, it became the number one plug-in car in China with over 25,000 sold in just that month. Versus the Tesla Model 3, which came in number two with only 13,800 sold that month. So it shows you how many of these they can make and how popular they are for how cheap they are. So you might be saying, okay, you just said there was more good Chinese cars coming. This doesn't look like one of them. <laughs> looks I kind worse of, than the candy. Right. I kind of agree. I mean, this is looks like kind of a joke of a car. It can't even get on the highway. I mean, so why are you saying this is an alternative here? I think that we could see a shift. Uh, back when Japanese cars were hitting US roads in the 80s, um, they were a lot smaller. Of course, they could still get on the highway, hit highway speeds. They still had decent ranges and stuff like that. Um, but it was a fundamental shift in how people thought about automobiles. Yeah, but I mean, all you were asking people to do back then was to get into a smaller automobile, so maybe less trunk space or whatever, but it still did everything an automobile should. It still could go highway speeds. It still was safe. This doesn't look very safe, and it doesn't look like you can drive on the highway. So, I mean, I'm going to say three things I don't think are going to work for U.S. consumers. It looks funny. It can't go highway speeds and it doesn't seem to be very safe. Well, this is not the only kind of car that SAIC can make. In fact, they made a variant of the Mini EV called the Macaron. And uh, here it is. It has a bigger motor, 20 kilowatts versus 13. Um, it has three colors. It has a driver airbag. See, safety. It has other safety features, uh, but the same range. OK. Also, here's the Cambrio. Uh, they just unveiled this at the Shanghai Auto Show for 2022. It is a folding soft top with new styling. It's also planned for delivery in Europe as the Freezy Froggy. Hmm. Not oh. making that up. OK, so, I mean, they did check off one of my things, which was styling improvements. This does look a lot cuter and I can see this doing well in European cities. I mean, uh, the price is still a huge factor here. I mean, it's so cheap. I mean, just a question here. If this were brought to the U.S. at these current prices with the tax credit, would it be free? Would, would they be like, come on down, you can get a free car. That's right. Zero down, zero interest, zero payments. It's absolutely free. In fact, we'll pay you. <laughs> I don't know if it would be free, but it would certainly be very, very, very inexpensive. And I think that that is where if for people who just need something to get them around, especially in a city, you might maybe consider something like this. I mean, this is like, you know, a big step up from an e-bike because it'll keep the rain off of you. And it, and, you know, you would be able to actually hit, you know, decent speeds getting around. You might even be able to get on, you know, get on the highway, get off the highway. And I also just want to point out that some people will take cute over safety. I mean, just take a look at a Fiat 500. They're not terribly safe. And also if SAIC wanted to bring this car to the US, they would have to make some changes in order to pass safety regulations in the in the states. Right. And just like Sandy said last week, I mean, American big auto just isn't interested in this segment. To me, it's about styling. I don't think that American car companies should try and be a cono like they did with the Geo and the Spark, because, I mean, those were just compliance cars. So, I mean, if you get the front end to be kind of cute, like the Honda E-Concept or the Mini or the VW Bug, then I think people will forget about safety. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, going even further back in time, you remember the the Lemon ads for the VW uh, bug when it first came out. A lot of people thought that that car would not sell mm. in the US because it looked like a piece of crap um, and they kind of embraced that in their marketing or whatever. I think that people bought it because it was so cheap. And a car like this would be really cheap to fuel because it's so tiny, it's actually pretty efficient. And honestly, instead of paying for gas, you're paying for electricity. Also, you can park it anywhere in a city. I think uh, you can pull straight in perpendicular at a parking space. Exactly. I, and again, I know that this car wouldn't be for everyone, but it's something to think about. But this is not the only EV that Shanghai Auto makes. And to Sandy's point that Chinese automakers make a lot of cars, SAIC has sold over 500,000 cars just in September. Yeah, I mean, SAIC plans to have 100 EV models by 2025. And if you're like, Chinese cars will never make it in the US because they look like little pieces of junk. Well, then think again. This is the 2022 IML7, a four-door sedan being shown off at the Shanghai Auto Show. Coming early next year with a 93 kilowatt hour battery, it boasts 382 miles of NEDC range. Now, of course, that's closer to 267 miles of real world range, but they're also going to offer a 118 kilowatt hour pack for over a claimed 600 miles of NADC range. So 
419 miles is still nothing to shake a stick at. Yeah, I mean, it has a drag coefficient, just like a Tesla, of 0.21. It has 540 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Wireless charging up to 11 kilowatts. That's something you don't find on a Tesla. Other features include four-wheel steering, so the rear wheels steer, and it has autonomy on highways using LiDAR cameras and ultrasonics. This car is produced under the IM Motors badge, or ZG Motors brand. It's a partnership of SAIC, Pudong New Area, and Alibaba. What's Pudong New Area? I've never heard of that company. Uh, yeah, so Pudong's not a company. It's actually a city in China. So sometimes local cities invest in businesses. Okay, so this is like if the U.S. Post Office, which actually does produce vehicles, Amazon and Detroit got together to make a car. Not not Detroit like the big three, the city of Detroit. Right. Okay. Yeah, it is kind of funny how Chinese government and companies do work together like that. The starting price in China for the first 3,000 cars is $62,690. Now, I can see this car potentially competing with other luxury sedans in the U.S. Unlike the Mini EV, which has its own little segment, this looks like it would compete head on with like, I don't know, Lucid. And I think that they did a really good job with the looks. And one thing to mention is that a lot of these Chinese auto companies hire European designers, uh, names that you've probably heard of who've designed cars that you might be driving. Right. Um, Now, obviously, they are going after the Asian market when they're making a car that looks like this. So it might not be exactly for you, but I wouldn't say that it looks like a piece of crap. That's for darn sure. Exactly. So you wonder where Warren Buffett gets his reputation as an amazing investor. How about this? Buffett bought 225 million shares of the Chinese car company BYD back in 2008, and he spent 232 million. Today, that investment is worth north of 8 billion, a 3,400 percent gain in 13 years. BYD, or Build Your Dreams, makes a lot of EVs, but let's just focus on a couple. Let's start with this rather boring Econo four-door sedan model, the E5. BYD has been making these since 2015. The E5 300 has a 300 kilometer claimed range, NEDC, with a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack, and it goes zero to 60 in 7.6 seconds with a 160 kilowatt or 210 horsepower motor. It can also charge at 60 kilowatts at DC charging. So nothing special, but it has a starting price of around $31,000. So, I mean, if this were to drop onto American shores, it could give the Model 3 a run for its money. I mean, sure, there's no autopilot, it's fairly slow charging, no fancy features, but with an additional $7,500 tax credit, that's twenty three five versus thirty seven five for Model 3. That's a $14,000 difference. I mean, this, to me, is a Toyota Corolla. Exactly. And again, you might be saying, oh, it looks kind of Chinesey. All that is is a bunch of plastic on the front. You can change the way that it looks so that it will appeal to American buyers. I mean, selling a car like that for thirty one thousand dollars puts it in an affordable segment, especially with that uh, tax incentive. Yeah. And in case you thought that BYD couldn't sell outside of China this summer, they started selling their all electric version of the Tang luxury SUV in Norway. This car is definitely a step up from the E5, features a more luxury interior, 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, top speed of 180 kilometers an hour, and an 86 kilowatt hour battery, yielding a range of 400 kilometers WLTP, or about 220 miles of real world driving. The Tang is starting at about $67,000, and this uses BYD's new LFP blade batteries. And this is pretty exciting. I mean, BYD is actually making their own batteries, which is a huge, and they're actually innovating. They're not just sticking the same old pouch batteries in. They're trying to come up with better and better batteries. And this battery pack is structural, just like Tesla's 4680 pack. Okay, but I don't think BYD is going to be selling in the U.S. anytime soon. Except that they already are. BYD is selling buses and trucks in the U.S. and around the world. So are you thinking that they can add consumer vehicles to their lineup here in the U.S. more quickly because they already have a presence here? I think that having long-term employees, physical locations, and experience in the U.S. can definitely help BYD expand more quickly. And I mean, BYD is a big company. They have almost a quarter of a million employees. Now, for scale, Tesla has about 75,000. So you take Tesla, which is now valued as being the biggest car company in the world, and yet BYD has way more employees. It shows you they're a huge organization, and you have a good point. If they're already based here in the U.S. with offices and people, it makes it a whole lot easier to open up dealerships. But when dealing with big Chinese auto companies like our next one, BAIC or Beijing Auto, it can be confusing because just like with American and European big auto companies, 
Chinese big auto companies can own many brands. Here are BAIC's brands. And BAIC has many EV models. So let's just focus on this one, the EC5. This five-door, five-seater SUV has a single 80-kilowatt or 107-horsepower motor, a 48-kilowatt-hour battery for a range of 403 kilometers, NEDC, and a starting price in China of about $15,600. Wait, what? That's it? Keep in mind, it hasn't met all of U.S.'s safety regulations yet. BAIC would need to design and build it differently to meet U.S. safety requirements. But yes, even the top version only costs 18800 in China. So, I mean, even if they had to do a redesign and even if it came in at, say, $25,000 here in the U.S., if you could get the $7,500 tax credit, that would be $17,500 for a new SUV with 175 miles of real world range. Yeah, I mean, exactly. This could be very attractive for families, kind of like a Subaru. Right. I mean, it, it looks like a Subaru. Why right. couldn't it be a Subaru? And, you know, you might be saying, oh, 175 miles, that's not enough range. I mean, I have a car that goes like 70 miles. So I would say that it is possible in certain situations and they could sell you a bigger battery pack for right. a little bit more money. If, if we're talking $20,000 after the incentive, I think that that's a market that a lot of people would be looking for. And that's new. We're talking right. new cars. I, exactly. Because I mean, why do a lot of people buy a Subaru? Because they don't want to deal with maintenance, right? They've heard that like Subaru is a reliable brand. Well, EVs are reliable by nature. So you'd be buying a car that doesn't need oil changes, doesn't need exhaust system replacement. No timing belts, no head gaskets right. to worry about, that kind of thing. And this is true for all of these cars. It's true for all EVs. Right. All right. How about a Chinese auto startup like Neo that was founded in 2014? Can they compete in America? They almost went bankrupt when they launched their first car. But the local government in China pumped in a billion dollars to keep them afloat. And now they're trading on the New York Stock Exchange and worth over 60 billion. And they have over 7,000 employees. In April, NEO sold its 100,000th car. And let's look at their lineup. NEO has the EP9 sports car, which is following Tesla's playbook with the Roadster. They have the EC6 SUV Coupe. The ES6 SUV. The ES8 SUV and the ET7 sedan with over 600 miles of NEDC range. So let's just take a look at NEO's ES8, which is the full-size SUV. It seats seven. It's completely made out of aluminum with active air suspension. Now, NEOs can charge like a regular EV, but they also offer battery swaps, where you drive into these automated NEO battery swap stations and have your battery swapped for a fully charged one in less than five minutes. NEO is introducing the ES8 in Norway in March of next year with two battery sizes, 75 and 100 kilowatt hours. The big battery will get you 500 kilometers or 310 miles. That's WLTP, the European standard uh, of range. And it'll cost $77,590. Now, because NEO offers battery swaps, you can also buy the car without a battery if you want for less money and subscribe to battery swaps as a service, which makes the initial purchase price cheaper by about $10,000, but then there's the monthly subscription fee of $235. Now, battery swaps could be an interesting and unique feature to offer in the United States. Jury's still out on whether or not they're necessary in the U.S. But I mean, I do understand why they can work well in giant Chinese cities where at-home charging is challenging. And there are places in the U.S. where at-home charging is challenging. And I think that if Neo could keep the price below 80000 or so, and then you could get the $7,500 tax credit, it could be appealing to some U.S. customers. Yeah, I mean, this could be more of maybe a Tesla competitor because their tech is better. Mm -hmm. They've got better autonomy. They've got this battery swap feature. Um, and they've pretty much copied Tesla's playbook. So maybe this would start to appeal with Tesla owners. I think that it would also appeal to the particular kind of people that enter our comment section who go, well, I wouldn't buy an EV unless it could charge up in five minutes because I need to get across my state in 20 minutes and I need to drive 600 miles an hour to do that. And I can't stop for anything besides gas and I'll pee out the window. Like, yeah, those people, may maybe they want the Neo because then you just drive into the battery swap station and you're done. You don't have to, I don't want to plug anything in. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out in Norway next year and how Europeans like it. All right. Next up is Xpeng, a relatively new all EV auto company founded in 2014. They have two factories in China and have produced over 100,000 vehicles so far. 27,000 were delivered in 2020. They have the G3, the P7, and soon to be produced the P5. If you've heard of Xpeng before, it's probably due to news about them trying to steal trade secrets from both Apple and Tesla. And I want to just stop here for a second and say that Zach and I are not huge fans of Xpeng for this. Um, in fact, this episode is very rosy sounding for China. And I just want to address that we're not 
doing this because we're big fans of China or their government. Uh, this isn't some kind of social credit thing. Uh, we talked to Sandy Monroe last week and he told us that this is what he sees happening in the future. And it reminded us so much of the Japanese invasion from the 70s and 80s. And we wanted to talk about what it might look like if it happened again with China. But back to Xpeng, the G3 sells for $41,000 in Norway and has a range of 280 miles WLTP range. Then their second car, the P7, is more expensive at between $53,000 and $60,000 in Norway, but boasts ranges as high as 300 miles of real world range. The new P5 should sell between $24,500 and $34,700 for models that can go between 460 and 600 kilometers of any DC range. That's 200 to 260 miles of real world range. Plus there's X-Pilot, which is their version of Autopilot, and it can do pretty much everything Tesla Autopilot can do. Go figure. Yeah, so I don't like that they copied Tesla as much as they actually stole from Tesla, but yeah, they get it. They are following Tesla's playbook, and so that's pretty smart as a company. I just wish they didn't have to steal it to do it. Yeah, you know, how close to copying is stealing, you know? But exactly, this could be another Chinese company that if they brought it over to the U.S. could be kind of in the same class as, as a Tesla. Yeah, I mean, that P5 is going to look pretty good if they can keep those prices because that's uh, cheaper than a Model 3 and yet offers much of what a Model 3 offers. All right, so here is Li Auto, a.k.a. Li Zhang, named after its founder. It's another Chinese EV startup and it IPO'd on the NASDAQ in 2020 under the ticker symbol Li. Founded in 2015, it has about 2,000 employees and makes only one model so far, the Li Zhang 1, a luxury SUV. Now, technically, it's a PHEV. It's a plug-in hybrid. It has two electric motors for 240 kilowatts or 320 horsepower of power, uh, a 49 kilowatt hour battery with an NEDC range of 111 miles. Uh, it has a 1.2 liter turbo petrol engine to extend the range to 700 kilometers. And in fact, it's the best-selling plug-in hybrid in its class in China. Uh, Li has sold over 50,000 units in China since they debuted it in 2020. The price? 52.5. Now, I have a bit of a problem with PHEVs. We've talked about it a lot. These cars get that extra range by burning gas. But if your daily commute is, say, 100 miles or less, then you aren't going to be using any gas. And the stats do show that for most PHEVs like this that have a decent initial range, 95% of trips are gas-free. So that's really good. So again, I can see that if the Lee One came to U.S. shores, it could be popular. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take care of that range anxiety problem that a lot of U.S. drivers have. Mm -hmm. um, the styling isn't exactly what I think Americans want, but I guess you could tweak that. Um, and the price is great. All right, let's talk about Zhejiang Geely Holding Group, or just Geely. It's one of China's biggest automakers. Geely has been on a tear in the past few years, buying and starting new EV brands. For instance, Geely bought Volvo and Lotus and started the all-electric brand Polestar. And Geely just started Zeker, a new electric vehicle brand in China, to take on Tesla there. They are opening 100 stores for Zeker this year. But Geely says that Zeker will eventually look elsewhere to sell vehicles depending on demand. All right, so let's look at some Geely EV models. I'm intrigued by the Zeker 001. I mean, I think they're sold out already. Yeah, I mean, we know that it will have a starting price of $46,000 in any DC range of 400 miles, 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, an 800-volt electrical system, air suspension, heads-up display. I mean, could this be a Model 3 killer? I think all of this depends on the driving dynamics. Um, the suspension on the Model 3 is... Second to none. It's really, really, really good. Um, and I think that for people who want to spend basically the same amount of money um, for a very similar looking car, you're going to have to really impress on all the same things that Tesla's going to do. So that's where the price makes it less of a competitor to, for Tesla, but some people might like the styling, some people might like other features of it. I mean, for me, it's the range. I mean, I know that's 400 miles of any DC, so 43% do the math, it's probably a little under 300 miles, but still that's really good, and that's a pretty good price for 300 miles of range. But I'd like to take a look at the Geely Geometry EX3. This five-door crossover seats five. It has a 70-kilowatt motor, a 37-kilowatt-hour battery, a range of 322 kilometers, any DC, but the best spec is the price, just $9,200. It's only for sale in China at the moment, and so yes, it would likely have to be tweaked to fit U.S. safety standards, and so the price would probably have to be higher by the time it gets here with shipping and tariffs, etc. But let's say that it landed in the U.S. with a sticker price of $15,000. That would be... 
just $7,500 after the incentive. Yeah, I mean, you can't tell me this wouldn't excite a lot of car buyers. I mean, the range would actually be closer to 140 miles of real world range. And that's similar to like a new base Nissan Leaf. And I mean, that's what I paid for my used Nissan Leaf with half of that range. That's what I'm saying. And I just want to point out if the consumer is going to be paying less than $10,000 for the car, I think that you could throw more batteries in there. Bring it up to, oh, now the consumer has to pay $11,000. Oh, I see. Like have a different variant with a bigger battery. If if you could get that up to 200 miles for like $11,000, holy moly. I think a lot of people would say, okay, Okay, I just need a car to get me around around. with With a a very very decent decent range. 200 miles is livable. I will tell you that. And at $11,000, I mean, after incentives, that would be insane. Yeah. But I can see the comments now. Hey, you haven't covered every Chinese EV company there is. True. There are many, like Byton and Weltmeister Motors, uh, that we didn't touch. Weltmeister, or WM Motors, has the three electric SUV models, and they're coming out with this M7 all-electric sedan in 2022. Chinese electric startup Byton is now headed into bankruptcy instead of producing the m Byte in 2020, like they claimed back in 2018, reminding us all of how hard it is to grow a successful car company. And there are many more Chinese companies we didn't cover in this episode, like Eli, the makers of the Eli Zero neighborhood electric car. But we're investors of this startup, and you can see our interview with Marcus Lee, the founder and CEO here. But I think we made a pretty persuasive argument for the fact that if Chinese car companies can get many of their EV models to the U.S. at close to the prices that they're selling for in China, that many of these EVs will sell well here. But what does this mean for Tesla? Does it spell the end for Tesla? I mean, I don't think so at all. So while I do think that many U.S. consumers will find the low prices of Chinese EVs appealing and many U.S. consumers will buy them, you have to keep in mind a few things. First of all, the U.S. car market, although it's smaller than the Chinese car market, so 17 million cars sold in the U.S. in 2019 versus 25 million sold in China in 2019, That's 50% more cars, you say, but it's actually closer than you think because the average car price in the U.S. is higher. So if you look at the amount spent on cars, $462 billion in the U.S. versus $575 billion in China, that's only 25% bigger. So it's a big market with room for many players. And right now, American, German, Japanese, Korean automakers are all represented here. Point number two is by 2024, which is the first year that I think we will see a real countable presence of Chinese car companies in the U.S. But but Sandy said that this would be tragic in two years. In two years, it's going to be tragic. Yeah, and I think he's right. Tragic meaning it's going to be obvious in two years to every player that China is here to stay. I mean, look at Candy. Candy is here now, but they don't have any appreciable sales. Neo is in Norway starting next year. Xpeng and others are coming. And I think by 2024, that's going to be kind of the magic year where we all really start to feel it. We see thousands of sales from individual Chinese car companies here. But why wouldn't they be happening in two years, like Sandy said? Well, if it was going to happen in 2023, I think we would have already heard announcements from Chinese car companies about what they're going to be opening in 2023. And so far, all I've heard is from Candy. So I think that it, you know, it takes a while. You got to go through regulatory hurdles. You got to hire people. So I think we're going to start to hear that next year and in 2023. And then 2024, I think, is going to be the big doors opening. And by 2024, I mean, Tesla should be selling anywhere from three to seven million cars in the world. That's according to ARC. Um, and that's their bull bear case. So it's probably closer to seven million cars. So probably one to four million Tesla sales in the United States, uh, while Chinese sales will still be fairly negligible. Yeah. And I mean, one to four is a big spread. I think that it's going to be closer to four million cars that Tesla's selling here. So fast forward to 2024, I think Tesla will be selling about four million cars here. And Chinese companies will be selling in the maybe tens of thousands. So it won't be the tidal wave yet, but it'll be the first ripples that we see coming ashore. And it's similar to the Japanese invasion of the 80s, where Tesla's going to have a couple of different market segments that these Chinese brands don't have. Right. I don't think, I mean, we haven't heard of any pickup trucks. And I think that Tesla could squarely be in the pickup truck market, stealing market share away from Ford and GM and and Chrysler, you know, Dodge, Ram and stuff like that. I think that that market is just going to get smushed and smushed and smushed as these cheaper EVs uh, hit the market. What, you don't think the Pikmin pickup could compete? <laughs> OK, so at this point, you might be saying you've done two episodes called China is coming and now you're saying they're not coming. All right. So point number three here, China is coming with EVs. And this is an important point. 
They're coming with EVs. Each EV that China sells here is not going to displace a Tesla. It's going to displace an ICE car. Who makes ICE cars? Big Auto. Why isn't a Chinese EV going to displace a Tesla? Well, because someone buying a $25,000 BYD, for instance, wasn't going to buy a much pricier Tesla Model 3. They were going to buy a Toyota Corolla or a Ford Focus, just like the Hondas and the Toyotas of the 80s replaced the GM Oldsmobile Cutlass Supremes and the Ford Pintos and the Dodge Omnis. It's easy to think that, oh, well, EVs means EVs, but it's we're talking about completely different things here. I mean, if you know anything about Teslas, you know that they've got a supercharger network. You know that they can drive autonomously. You know that they're computers on wheels. A lot of the Chinese EVs that are coming aren't going to be as sophisticated, let's be honest. Yeah, I think that they're going to be replacing a lot of the more base gas cars that you see on the roads all the time where people don't care what car they buy. They just need something to get them around. And if that thing could be electric, uh, A, I think that culturally that's going to become more important over the coming years. And also it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to maintain and fuel and cheaper too. all of these uh, things combined means that, you know, no one is going to want to buy a Ford Focus anymore. But what about the Tesla Model 2 or the $25,000 EV that Tesla should be coming out with in the coming years? I think that if Tesla can create the Model 2, and I think they can, the only way they won't dominate the market is because Tesla won't be able to keep up with the demand. I mean, I think it's going to be a killer car. I think that it's going to open the market to so many more people. And if it's anything like the Model 3 in terms of styling and features, it's going to blow the competition away. But I think it's going to be hard to compete when they come out with that $25,000 Model 2, let's be honest, it's probably going to cost $28,000. Um, $27,500. Right. Okay. And so they'll get the EV tax credit. So there'll be, let's say, a $20,000 car after the credit. But if along comes a BYD or a Geely with a car that after the tax credit is $7,500, so now you're a consumer looking at a $7,500 Geely or a $20,000 Tesla. That's still a huge price difference there. And I think a lot of people are going to go 7,500 bucks. I can get like two or three of these cars for the same price. All right. Another point is that many of the Chinese models coming will have some form of autonomy. But from what we've seen so far, almost all Chinese autonomy involves LIDAR, just like a lot of American models do. I believe that autonomy will be solved just like Elon does with cameras only. As Elon has said many times before, LIDAR is a crutch. By 2024, I think Tesla will have at least level four autonomy solved. They have the best hardware, the most data, and arguably one of the best autonomy teams in the world. Autonomy is going to open up Tesla network for Tesla, which I believe will be the beginning of the end for car ownership. The end of car ownership? So, I mean, you think no cars are going to be sold in 2024? No, there'll be plenty of cars sold in 2024. But very soon after that, car sales will drop dramatically. And when they do, who will be the first to go? Those making ICE cars? Exactly. Most of the American, Japanese, and German big auto companies, although they are giving lip service to EVs and trying to catch up in designing and making them, they do not control one important aspect of EVs, which is? Batteries. Batteries. That's right. Whoever controls batteries controls electric cars. And who controls batteries right now? Cattle, LG Chem, Samsung, Panasonic, BYD, SK Innovation, and Tesla. So again, in 2024, as the market continues its shifts to EVs, as more and more EV models are available, now including lots of less expensive models from China, who is going to be hurting? Companies that can't get enough batteries who will still have much of their resources going into ice manufacturing, and they are going to lose market share quickly. So there you have it, our in-depth on the Chinese EV invasion. But this is just one facet of the future of the automotive sector. We couldn't possibly cover it all in one video. Now, do you think China is coming? Leave your comments below and consider joining us on Patreon to help support the research and reporting that we do for you every week. If you're interested in the investment opportunities that we stay on top of every week, consider joining our Patreon Investor Club, which currently has 1,700 members who are staying on top of disruptive companies through our monthly live streams with founders and CEOs of disruptive companies and our exclusive Slack. Head over to patreon.com slash now you know for more information. And if you like all things Tesla, SpaceX, Boring Company, and Elon, you're going to love EcoWear, where you'll find over 100 designs on everything from t-shirts to mugs to pet bandanas. So go check out EcoWear for some awesome holiday gift ideas. And remember, everything there is carbon negative because we offset the manufacturing, the shipping, and the life cycle of your order. And on top of that, we plant 10 trees with our partners at the Eden Reforestation Project. And we help cap an abandoned methane spewing oil well with our friends at the Well Done Foundation. 
And if you're new to Now You Know, welcome. Please join us every Tuesday for Tesla Time News, the longest running weekly show on everything Tesla, EVs, and sustainability. Hit the subscribe button and the bell button. We'll see you next week. Now, now You Know. know.